Alrighty, everybody. Today, we're gonna actually going to do the bonus episode that I talked to, well, the bonus chapter that I talked about at the end of the last episode. But before we do that, we're going to make a small pit stop. First, we're going to warp over to Helm's Deep. And we're actually going to pick up a free play character that we have unlocked. Now, in order to do this bonus level, if you've, assuming you've completed all 18 chapters of the story, you will have all the characters you need unlocked in order to complete it. Um, however, you will not have, we have one character we have missing in order to actually complete the free play stories because we, we will need, be needing explosives, which you do not have access to. Now, one of the blueprints that we haven't picked up yet because I skipped all of them is one from Mithra Fireworks. And if you have that one completed, you will not need the Berserker, but Berserker will actually give us access to explosives. So, and that will actually make, it actually disappeared, didn't it? Been having an issue with some of the guide studs disappearing on me. There we go. But the Berserker, having the Berserker will actually, and having readily access to fireworks will actually make the, the chapter, the, the bonus chapter a little bit easier. So that's why I'm picking it up now. Now you will unlock this character once you actually, well, available to purchase. And you have to beat the crap out of him first after you have completed Helm's Deep. So let's buy him. There we go. All right. So now our guide studs are gonna reappear again. But we're gonna make it a little easy on ourselves. Where is Rivendell? Where are you? Are you up here? Yes, okay. And we're gonna fast travel to that just to make our journey a little bit easier. All right, so here we are in Rivendell where I finally got the guide studs to actually reappear to our intended destination because it does not appear on the map. So let's wind our way through Rivendell here and we'll stop and say hello to any elves that we happen to come to pass. You can see our destination right in the background there, but we actually need to do a little roundabout to actually get there. Because, well, none of us can actually swim, which is kind of stinky, but here's where we had our lovely meeting. No one's here now, but they just keep the chairs out in the open, because why the heck not? I just like jumping over the water there, even though you don't technically have to, but... <laughs> All right, camera, would you tilt? Let's hop on the rocks. Straight into the waterfall. Yep, we can just go through those raging rapids there. And here we go. And now it appears on our map, now that we've discovered it. All right, so if you notice something a little different here, we are now Sauron. Isn't that awesome? So our objective here in the bonus level is to smash everything. There's a million studs in here and we need to collect all of them. But what's really awesome is we actually get to keep them. So break anything and everything that is made of Lego. Now what we have here our explosives we can pick up and throw at absolutely everything. And they will actually respawn, but I've had an issue, and there's several of them in this level, uh, where one of them actually will not respawn, and the reason I bought the Berserker is so you will not continuously have to walk back and forth to get these explosives, because you will need them in several places. So basically it's just to prevent backtracking, and if you hit that a bunch of times you can make it... Um, blow up into bits, which is pretty cool. So yeah, everything and everything, break it, build it, whatever. The level will automatically end once you collect all the studs and things you get for building like that, it will automatically uh, add into your inventory. So that's good. So you can't actually lose any studs. This level is actually pretty big as well. And as you can see, now we actually need to switch characters because we're gonna need someone. No, not my treasure trove. My selection of characters. It's good to be the king. 
Does he have the right sword? Yes, he does. All right. So as you can see, yeah, we're going to have things we need to explode with fireworks and explosives. And we're going to have more blocks we need to break and everything like that. And I think I can blow that up. But yeah, Berserker is like the only thing he can do is just blow everything up. Nope. But yeah, we can blow up the other orcs and everything here. <laughs> and yes, that actually does get us something, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna blow you up. No, not him. You. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure why causing these guys to uh, throw explosives at him um, nets us stuff out of the volcano here, but. It's A-OK, -okay, because it's still fun anyway. Just want to make sure I got everything. Alright, enough of that. Let's build. Now can I blow you up? Nope, don't think so. Okay. Switch back to Sauron here. And just beat the Evan loving crap out of absolutely everything. It will only disappear faster. No, would you get off that? I thought I got stuck there for a second. So yeah, this level's really fun. The only, the only thing that kind of kills it is the music in the background, which, well, the music is cool. It doesn't quite fit the, um, the theme of the level, so, I mean, I need something more upbeat and, um, ass kicky. Overkilling grass. That is how we mow the lawn in Middle Earth. Rawr. That was fun. Now I can't just randomly throw explosive around because that's like the only thing the Berserker can do. <laughs> and it's actually pretty. No, you weren't supposed to throw it that way. This way. Actually, let's do that to everything. Let's just blow everything up. Just throw explosives at absolutely everything. Throw them at the wall. Yeah, see? That's something I can blow up. Totally awesome. I don't think I can blow up the Morgul blocks, though. Yeah, you need, you need the magic sword for that. Our glow-in-the-dark sword. Don't forget to pick up those. I'm just going to blow everything up for a while, just until, just for a little bit. No, throw them this way. Thank you. Spam that explosive button. It's a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I actually didn't do this for the original time. The first time I actually did this, I didn't have the Berserker and had to go back and forth to get the explosives where needed, which kind of annoyed me because it made this take a lot longer than it really did. Than, well, necessary. Blow that up. Now, if you've seen my uh, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, uh, if you hop on some of the animals, it will actually lead you on a trail of some studs, which will only appear if you're mounted. So make sure you ride all the animals, too. I'll go back to that spot eventually. Just want to make sure I exhaust the path of studs, and I think I just did. So let's go back. But that doesn't mean we can't blow some stuff up along the way. I love how he just like throws it underhanded. That is just so awesome. Yeah, I, I know I could I know I need an orc for that and something for somebody who's not a berserker because he can't pull anything because well he's constantly holding on to something. So let's switch back. The reason I'm not just changing it on my other character is because it's a glitch that can sometimes happen where um because uh, we don't actually have Sauron unlocked yet. We will at the end of, as, uh, once we actually complete this. So once you switch off of him, you sometimes can't switch back. Which is kind of stingy. But that's alright. It's okay. So let's get ourselves... Where is my orc? Right here. So let's pull on that. Because that's the only way you can actually get those. Is to have an orc character yank on them. And now we can start smashing this to pieces. 
Because blowing stuff up with Legos is always so much fun. Why is there the lone stud in the corner? Oh god, don't tell me that's glitched. That is not... There we go. I was going to say, that is not good if it won't let me get that studs. Because I, I think there may be just exactly one million studs in here. I, there may be a few extra. I'm not 100% sure, actually. See, we're not even a tenth of the way there yet. This place is huge. Smack everything, blow everything up, yank on everything. We need a crank for that, actually. And we'll we need to actually be using our full repertoire of characters for this. Beat up that bush. You show that grass who is the boss around here. Smack those flowers. You can hurt the people. Yeah, um... It might, might not be a good idea to stand in the middle of Destructo Vale here. Thank you. Because, you know, you might end up getting yourself killed, which is pretty much what I just did. Yeah. I didn't think so. <laughs> Apparently they give health even though you don't need it in this chapter at all. Because I don't know if you can die and you're obviously not going to get actually penalized for death. Don't forget the studs behind here. Those are important. You don't want to miss those. Oh, blowing people's houses up. Sorry about that. Again, you shouldn't have made your house of uh, extremely fragile bricks in Destructoville. I'm going to mow your lawn for you. Might not have to fine you for that. Uh, the only thing, sticky thing is here, there's not much to talk about. See, we have explosives in another part over here. But it takes too long to actually uh, load that thing up. So, which is why I find the Berserker so handy here. <laughs> you can just throw them left and right and just let them smash everything for you. That's what makes it so awesome. See, this part we actually need explosives for. So, and the one time I played this, I actually the. Um, the generator behind us actually eventually ran out. So I keep having to backtrack to the one way at the beginning to keep blowing that up, which was really, really annoying. I'm not sure if it, there is a finite amount in there and you only have just enough to complete the level, which I don't think so. I, I, I mean, it may have just been a glitch. I don't know. And uh, honestly, I don't care to find out. So, yeah. So if you want my advice, make your life easier and buy the Berserker. <laughs> and I just blew up that sheep. Or whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if... Yeah, these ones don't have any stud trails with them. Um, I'm not sure if I should have done that or should not have done that. Or actually what they're even called in Middle Earth. But for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to call them sheep. Don't know if I can blow up these posts or not. Nope, I don't think so. But I'm gonna blow up the people. Just for the heck of it. Blow up the ladder. Blow up the building. <laughs> oh my god. This is just so much fun just spamming the explosive button. This just makes it so much easier. I really wish I had done this the first time now. Had I even known. Well, I probably did know about it. But didn't actually think about doing this. Until I started this Let's Play. That, yeah, I'm going to buy the Berserker a little bit early and complete this level with it. Just makes it so much easier. Because now I don't have to even go up against anything. And I need something else to talk about. But this is just so much fun, guys. You have no idea. Alright, have I exhausted everything over here for now? I think so. I've already ridden you. Do I need to blow that up? Yes, I can. Yeah, so even if you have to, you've exhausted every, th every possibility on everything. Throw some explosives at it. Because you may still yet find something to blow up. All the more reason to buy the Berserker before you come here. <laughs> no, don't throw it backwards. I don't know if I can do anything, blow anything up with this yet. I think that's just a gateway. I can open from the other side. I'm going to double check that. Just to be sure. Yeah. 
Blow up that volcano! Now we get more stuff we can build with it. If it will actually let me. There we go. Yeah, just keep throwing explosives everywhere in this until you complete this. Yeah, because sometimes I keep having to go back. And do this. Can I do anything with the crank yet? I don't think so. And I think I've exhausted my abilities with them. I think. Not 100% sure here. There's just so much to this level that it's easy to forget uh, what you've completed and what you haven't. Can I build that? There we go. And now we can operate the crank. There we go. Are you dancing? I have no idea what is going on here, but it's pretty funny. I, I think I just... Yeah. I, okay, this is weird. Wait, wait. Now can I blow them up? No, I wanted to actually throw this thing at you now that the spotlight is on you. Nope, nothing happens. Okay. Just gonna throw a few more explosives just for good measure. There's just so much. Oh, I missed a stud over there. There is just so much to the starting level. I'm already halfway complete, though. And I missed blowing you up. That is a shame. And I need to find the crank for that, but we haven't gone over here yet, when I'm pretty sure it's over here. Throw those. Like, you don't even need to just actually look at what you need to blow up. Just throw explosives absolutely everywhere. When in doubt, C4. All right, and we crank over here, so let's activate that, which will lower the, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, it will lower this uh, pole over here, along with the tight rope. I can blow you up. I can't blow you up because I actually need a tight rope walker, well, acrobatics to get up there. We'll go inside that tunnel in a moment. That leads to the other side you can see on the far right there. Oh, Berserker, you are so much fun. As far as I know, there are studs in that tunnel. We'll come back over here. We'll take care of this stuff first. Now, I wanted to blow up the flowers. There we go. Awesome. Not sure why it's having a target inside. That shouldn't happen. Alright, I think we've exhausted our possibilities there. Can I go around there? Nope. It's not actually letting me, but it could be just a... I thought I saw a stud over here. No, okay, I think I was just actually confusing it with, um... <laughs> with the stud in the corner, actually. Squish, there we go. There we go. Just wanted to make sure I didn't actually need my own rope there. But nope, let's actually... No, I did... Oh. Sam, get off there. Let me actually switch to Legolas over here. If we'll hurry up and change. There we go. Let's actually climb over here. Thankfully the hitbox on those things are uh, pretty huge. And you can just jump your way across because it's so much faster. Don't forget to knock that over. Because we may be able to blow that up. Oh, I wish it didn't take so long to change characters. There we go. So now let's head over here into the little cave. Yeah, see, there's actually stuff here. So it looks like it just comes out the other side, but... They're very tricksy. Gonna blow you up, cause it's so amusing. Get the studs behind there, don't forget about those. Studs along the wall, don't forget about those either. Oh, we're a little over halfway done. Well, stud-wise anyway. No, no, aim for that, thank you. A big fat arrow sign. I'm gonna come this way first, just so we don't forget about this stuff. Yes, 
He won't let me jump on that rope, which is kind of stinky. I'll have to switch to sand. But first, blow, blow the thing up right in front of you, please. Thank you. I think I've exhausted this corner over here. Yep. All right. Sam, my buddy, where are ya? Yeah, I know you're tired, but that's okay. Switch. Now climb up it all the way. There we go. And jump up there. Switch back to my explosive guy. I did not think this guy was going to be that useful in this level. Well, as useful as he's ending up being. Like I said, when in doubt, C4. That seems to be the method here. It seems to have a pretty damn good path of destruction. I underestimated you. Get the studs in the corner. Thank you. Oh, they just, I don't even have anything to talk about anymore. Other than, this is really so much fun. If you guys want to mute it and, like, not talk about this anymore, then... <laughs> I honestly can't blame you if you've sat around this long listening to me jabble on about explosives. And how much fun they are. Blow that up, please. But yeah, this game is really fun. The only, the only thing is, it's just so long, and I... Well, let, you, let me get back up there. Oh, I missed those studs up there. No! Well, let me get one of them. Let me switch back to Sam real quick. Don't like how it doesn't even let you move while it's uh, switching characters here. That's kind of sticky, but... Load times and all that. That's the one thing that stinks about this game. At least the PS3 version. The load times are absolutely atrocious. Now once... Hold down the character wheel! Alright, get far enough away from him that we'll... Uh, yeah, there we go. I wish, like, the game actually used the L and R buttons for something, because sometimes between, like, switching between weapons or switching between characters is a pain in the butt, because tapping it and holding it down does two different things. And the game, as far as I know, doesn't make use of the L and R buttons when they're clearly on the controller, so... At least for, obviously, PS3, so... I honestly think it should have made more use of that. So, as you can see, when I wanted to actually switch to my character wheel rather than just swap between player 1 and player 2, it wouldn't let me do that at its close range, and that can be kind of a problem. So that's kind of... stinky. Now, thankfully, by getting back to load times, once you actually load up the file and the area loads, then you don't have to deal with load times, but you can be sitting there two or three minutes waiting for something to actually load, and it's a pain in the butt. It's like, hurry up already, hurry up already, and sometimes transporting between map stones, sometimes it's really quick, and sometimes the load times are just horrible. This is why you need data install. I mean, I have a zillion gigabytes of hard drive space on this PS3, I like to be able to make use of it other than save files. And yes, I know the PS3 is capable of other things as well, but I really wish um, there was like a data install option on this to make load times like non-existent so it doesn't have to keep copying it over temporarily from the disk and everything like that. I just really wish it had that, that capability. I mean, it wouldn't have to be, you know, need to actually be a requirement, but just having that option at least would have been nice. And then, you know, if you wanted to actually uninstall, you know, the main game from the hard drive and play it from the disc, if you needed the hard drive space, you could have that option later. But, it, you know, the system actually does have a hard drive. Make use of it. And, of course, I know there's a difference, you know, because when it, with a game like this that's multi-platform, you know, obviously not all consoles have the same capabilities. You need to take into account for that. But when you have it on a console that does take advantage of those capabilities, make use of them. I mean, th th there's a reason I chose to get this game on a PS3 rather than some other console. I mean, Gren and I own, obviously, a PS3, so, you know, why not take advantage of that? But there's no reason I, you know, I... I could have bought this for a Wii, because, I mean, I have, I've owned a Wii for a while, but one of the re specific reasons I bought it for PS3 
was to take advantage of um, like the layout of the PS3's controller compared to something like the Wii. Like there's a very specific reason I chose this this version, and I just uh, I not that I regret purchasing it for this version or anything like that, but I but I wish I it the features were taken more advantage of, and I'm disappointed that they're not. I mean, like I said, with the, with the game being multi-platform, I can kind of understand why. But at the same time, like I said, if you have the ability to take advantage of it, why not? Let's ring the bell. School's in. Not anymore. Class dismissed. Recess. I miss having recess. It was so much fun. Even if all you did was stand around and hang out, it was a nice welcome break and you got some fresh air and everything like that. I remember being slowly disappointed as, you know, you went from losing your morning recess to just having lunch recess in middle school and then in high school you don't have any recess at all. Or any break for that matter. Well, except for lunch, but... In, in my lunch, besides the five minutes you were getting uh, uh, available to getting to the cafeteria and back uh, in between classes, and granted, it didn't take the whole five minutes to get to the calf, unless you really dawdled. But at the same time, the lunch period itself was a whole 22 minutes! And that was including time to, you know, find a table, go to the snack bar, or, you know, get a hot lunch or whatever. So you had 22 minutes to eat and catch up on anything, you know, with your friends, and basically just do anything. I didn't feel like it was enough time. Like, you didn't have, an, you know... Like I said, it was barely enough time just to even eat. And that was the only time you were actually given a chance to eat. Like, there was no, like, morning break for, like, 15 minutes for you to snack or anything of the sort. And, of course, most... And there was a school-wide rule that you weren't allowed to carry uh, beverages around. Although some teachers, as long as it was only a bottle of water from, say, lunch period, they were a little more lenient on that. Which I'm very glad, because even though there were water bubblers, obviously it was local water. And, like, you couldn't nibble or, or, or drink any water throughout the day except lunch period, according to the rules. And it sucked. It's like, you're in school seven hours a day and you have growing teenagers and you can't even let us eat or drink anything? What kind of crap is that? I know I'm going to run a ranting about something completely stupid now, so let's go in here. I know that was kind of a silly rant, but... One reason high school sucks. If you're in middle school, don't ever look forward to going to high school because it's it's not as great as adventure as it is. It, it it is a part of life and it, it is a life milestone. But and you might be excited to you know finally be going with uh, to school with the big kids and whatever. But it's like all school. It has its ups and downs. But if you're looking forward to being the best years of your lives, you are going to be disappointed because, my god, it gets so much better once you're actually not in there. It's rough, but, yeah. But yeah, if you're looking to, like, graduation or prom or anything being the best years of your lives, yeah, you're in for a little bit of a disappointment. Because it's not. And here is our much-needed crank. Nope, nope, wrong thing. I want my... Equipment! To get out my bombs again. Yeah, I know it's showing me an arrow of where that crank goes, and I already know where it goes, but I am not finished blowing everything up just yet. Stop throwing it backwards over your head! Blow that up! Thank you! Get that! Get, no, cut the cart in front of me, please. Thank you. Don't forget the ones in the corner. Man, the amount of times you have to blow something or hit something up is kind of astounding in this level. Like, you just keep having to smack everything until there is nothing left to smack anymore. Yeah, see, as you can see, I die, but I don't get a stud penalty at all, so... Those NPCs don't need to carry hard, although it's kind of funny that they do. Considering, besides falling off a cliff like that, nothing can hurt you. Almost there. Our whole like 300 studs short. All right. So now that we have our magic crank, I 
Let's whip that baby out. No. Go to this. Thank you. Let's turn it! And it's gonna fall right on me. There we go! And that's her! Uh, I don't know if you saw the stud counter going up. You didn't physically see the studs. But as you can see, two new characters, including Sauron, and of course we get a trophy for completing that level. So as you can see, yeah, there's just barely over a million studs in that level. So hooray! And unlike in the LEGO Star Wars series, you actually get to keep them, which is pretty nice, which, considering I had about a million studs going into that, well, we have now double our stud count, which is really awesome. Alright, so back at our starting point once again. And now we have everybody we need to officially begin the uh, free play. But not only do we have to do all 18 chapters over again in free play and get mini kits and such. Actually, I want to zoom back in again. We have all these other little doodaddies in between. Like characters to pick up, blueprints, some more mithril bricks. Actually, the, uh, the red bricks, which we get for doing... Uh, various quests, one of which we saw way at the start of the game in Bree. Um, the one we actually had to complete in order to even progress. So we're just going to start right back at the beginning, right where we started the game, and work our way pretty much in the same order. So keep an eye out for that coming soon, and thank you for watching, guys, and I shall see you later.